start the recording. And now let us begin the final day of SMT5 Vengeance, because I'm not going to play this game for much longer. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the stream, and welcome back to SMT5 Vengeance. Where? I've beaten this game twice now. One more time for the one ending I'm curious about, and after that, I am just done with this game. I've played it too much. What up, Dark? It's technically less, it'd be 21, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep, I have to see. Oh well. But, alright. Tisha has weird stuff, but this one is fine. Wait, what is that emote? That is a big... Oh my god, really? <laughs> All right, but at least with this video, I would like to also inform the YouTube crowd that things might change a little bit. Assuming nothing goes terribly wrong, I will have a job starting tonight. And that's going to probably change up a bit on when I actually can stream, so hopefully nothing too big happens. Besides that, though, let's get started. And let's see who can spot first what changed what I did to change this game, because here's where we last saw, starting the new cycle, and then here's where I am now. Technically, just about six-ish hours went by. Who can spot the big difference first? <laughs> okay, this should not be very immediate until I open up the menu, but... Aside, just like if you look at the map, I have done that. nothing but the critical path. I've explored not a goddamn thing about any of this. If it was required, I went there. If it wasn't, it was ignored. I don't even think I fought any of the normal uh, things. Nine attacks all demons? No. While I probably actually could have and maybe should have, I didn't just because, like, that would require more time grinding for the money. And I kind of decided to not really do that much anymore. Some, yes, but not much at all. No, the big thing that you cannot really notice right now is possibly visible here. Maybe. Actually, right now it should be visible. Something happened. The original mod we had that showed us actual numbers for everything is gone. So we cannot see how much damage these things do. Just because I'm using a different mod that requires its own mod manager that on its own like that tells, will, not let, will not let the game load the other stuff. So because of that, we cannot see numbers anymore. Which is not too bad. Because it would not help at all with the new mod's contents. I believe it's some, uh, right after here. Right after Nama, we have Ardha, which is not in the base game anywhere. But a while ago, I think I mentioned it to BB Guy, or uh, not BB Guy, Demon Radicate. They're like, hey, there's a mod that adds, a must, that adds new demons to the game on unused slots. I wonder how that's going. And then I just never looked at it again. This was around, I want to say, when we were still maybe midway through the first playthrough, so some time has passed. And it appears the mod has kept on going to adding several demons, all fully 3D, and from what I understand goes, the models were just ripped from the SMT gacha game. And so that's how, how we have so many more. A lot that can be gotten, and just we now have it. But, if anyone has ever played a game with mods, there's something to take note of. If it's modded, it's probably busted. Because it is not balanced in any way, because nobody that mods generally has had any experience with a game design or balancing of it. 
especially to the current accepted power level of a game. So some things are just entirely broken. For example, look at this. Look at this. Look at Arta. The epitome of carnage. This skill says when using a healing skill on an ally, the target will have a random stat raised by one rank for three turns. So if they use Medium uh, Mediarahan, everyone gains one random stat increase. That doesn't sound too busted, does it? Because it isn't. But then you look at their act, their unique skill. Ruin and Grace. Severe strength-based single target almighty attack to one foe. It lowers their defense to the minimum, so no matter what, it'll set them to minus two. And it raises, it heals everyone on the team and raises their stats by one. That counts as a healing skill, so it triggers Epitome of Carnage. That sounds pretty busted, because it is, but at the very least, it is... Actually, I, I, I can't really defend this that much. It is just busted. But funny enough, that is still not the most busted thing in this fucking mod. Let's move on. Here we have Cthulhu. I did not realize Cthulhu had made it into the SMT universe, but fucking there he is. Call of Relay. While in the active party, ailment of efficacy and instant kill chance will go up for all, so basically taboo. Grail increased damage when attacking a target that has an ailment, so it's a two for one. What some other demons had as their one uh, innate skill, Cthulhu just smashed them into two. And then I'm a lost sanity. Four to eight medium almighty attacks to random foes with a high chance of inflicting an ailment to random foes. It doesn't say one, it says an ailment. I've seen a do seal and confusion, I believe. So as furthermore, this just checks every ailment to randomly give them one. Tommy Blue? Yes. For my final day playing the game, I decided, fuck it, let's mod it. So we have my Artha and now Cthulhu. And I'm going through how anything that's modded into a game is blatantly busted from a balance perspective because nobody that does this shit knows how to balance to the current game power level. So yes, deal with more damage versus uh, anything that has an ailment and can inflict ailments all on their own. Plus, does anyone else notice something different about the skills Cthulhu has? Because the mod maker decided to add a new skill category to the game. I'll give you a hint. Hi, Almighty. Almighty. So what is Almighty Survivor? That is the next step of fucking power creep. It's another thing to boost Almighty. Plus, for some reason, it has Endure bundled into it. I do not know if it clashes with Almighty Pleroma, because I didn't bother testing. I just sort of looked at it and said, damn, that's busted. And just kept it. And believe it or not, that is still not the most busted thing this mod has given us. No. Technically, I would argue that it is this unit. Or technically, what this unit does. Look at Krishna. It's the Persona... Uh, it's the Persona. SMT M4 design. When, the, when the increases damage when attacking a target that has an ailment. Again, a lot more focus into ailments. While in, in the active party, all allied attacks may become critical hits against foes that have ailments. So once again, it's enabling um, ailment uh, builds, and I kind of actually like that. If it was more focused on that, I probably would have just loved it all the more. Dream Ragda. Four weak force attack and four weak electric attacks to random foes with a high chance of inflicting ailment. This does count as a force and electric attack, technically. As in, if the opponent resists or, uh, sorry, drains or repels force or electricity, it will hit this, uh, this move will actually have the proper effect and we will lose all of our press turns. But it will not necessarily reflect when you target it, so careful with that. But even then, that is not what I mean by broken. I could also point out that sure, this person has two survivor skills, so I do not know if uh, Krishna is just going to survive three instant uh, three hits in any fight we do. But even again, that is not the most broken thing. The most broken thing is apparently their Magatsui skill, Avatar. It requires you to have in your stock Kalki, Rama, 
and a Vishnu, I believe. And you can get Krishnism uh, Avatar skill, or their Mega 3 skill, which is called Avatar. This is, for me, the most broken thing ever. It gives your entire allies, all allies on the field, succession. Their next attack will be performed four times. Giving succession to a demon that is key to the strategized builds, such as the Arahabaki, which can just pass on their buffs to everyone. Everyone can have succession. That is four um, uh, Frey Kugels per um, uh, summoning. That is four Figment Slashes per summoning. That is categorically busted. Or should I say busted if it worked? It's all allies. Yes. Here is, once again, one of the mainly good or bad things about mods and um, uh, mod makers and trying to make it for the game. It doesn't exactly work well. This thing does not work technically because every instance of a spell being used counts as an attack in this game. For example, Dream Raga, four weak and four, uh, four weak force and four weak electric attacks. Each one of those counts as an attack, apparently. So when Krishna uses it and uses Dream Raga, they will use Dream Raga twice and that's it because the game itself does not recognize this as an attack. It recognizes it as launching two random attacks at the cost of one press turn. So, it does not work with some modded stuff. That's the saving grace. So, you know the transfer? Oh, no. If you, um, uh, what's it called, are doing this with um, uh, our Habaki, you need something to transfer the skills to the one team that's going to move everything. But, aside that, yeah, it's unstable. Got it. A lot of things are unstable. Black Maria is actually a demon I wish was in the game because it, it actually has a very interesting idea. Greatly increase, increases damage for allies that have ailments. When all stats are raised, increase the amount of HP and MP restored. Black Lullaby is a skill that actually is very interesting. Slight HP and MP recovery for all, all allies increases their stats by one rank. Similar to what... what uh, I done does, similar to what Konanasakiya does. The big thing is, she can inflict our own team with poison. Therefore, filling the conditions for Black Beckoning, where anyone allies have an ailment just can deal more damage. Is it actually in the game? I do not remember if she is, but I don't think it, that she is. It's just a, um, uh, it's regular um, uh, Maria. It's uh, this, I don't have her on the team. It's a different Maria that you can find. So where are the numbers? That's the thing, Demon Eradicate. The original mod cannot load when this one is loaded. I don't know how to make it work, and I just didn't actually try that much. So we no longer know the numbers of things. And I cannot find the numbers in the game files. I just don't know how to open them or even read them. The next thing, though, is again... Feeding into what I believe the mod designer wanted with more ailment opportunities. Ah, oh, shit. Hold on. Be right back. It's probably going to get cut from the VOD, but got a call from family, so I was gone for about, 50, about 20 minutes, probably, actually. But... Avatar is still the most broken thing that this mod introduces. Giving the entire party succession is beyond busted. The only redeeming uh, part of it is that not everything about that works correctly with some demons. It just doesn't. Dream Ragda can only be cast twice on a succession because it counts as two separate effects being used at once. Black Maria is a demon I wish was in the game originally because Black Lullaby and Black Beckoning actually sounds like an interesting idea. People with ailments deal more damage, give your entire team ailments and have to manage it in exchange for higher damage. That just sounds kind of good. Anger Mayu, uh, mind you, was going to be one that kind of works with the idea of an ailment team. And one of the this skill will go up for all, go up for all and allies almighty attacks, maybe them critical hits. And Tictheon was not originally in the game, but it's now here, and it is also kind of buggy. 
I don't know how. When you use the spell, it will say that stats have hit rock bottom. I think I believe that says um, uh, stats have hit rock bottom, but it's only a minus one. And under a circumstance that I cannot exactly reproduce consistently, I have seen it give the enemy team plus one to all stats. So, genuinely don't know. Toxic Spray is also just decent for this kind of build. It's some um, uh, poison and defense down, Freikugel. And here's the one other, I think one other kind of uh, passive skill that was added in by the mod. Avatar skills. It's still an almighty Pleroma, but apparently it also is a, what's it called? Critical Zealot. Maybe to some extent, I don't know if it's actually as good as Zealot, but apparently it's just a similar effect bundled in with a Pleroma. Halal is here. Morning Star must have some crazy damp base numbers, I believe. Or Antixion is also just minor. Because its damage is actually kind of alright. But that's all he kind of has. While in the active party, all allies that almighty attack may become critical hits. It's typically for an almighty team, which could be interesting, I guess. Guan Yu is the one that, so far that I've found that is the most just broken uh, not broken broken because that's just um, uh, the avatar skill but consistently good while in the active party increase crit damage and physical attack for all allies increase crit damage based on the number of active effects on the user so this is similar to uh, what Masakado has Masakado is crit rate and crit damage this one is just crit damage but I feel like something's different about it. At least the number is a little bit different. That and also Dragon Blade is just stupid. Heavy physical attack to one foe and weak physical attack to all foes. This will pierce and guarantee critical hit. It is a buffed up Yabusame shot that also has a random single target heavy physical attack. I cannot explain how strong this is without actually you seeing it. And also, I believe this was not in the basic game, Vorpal Blade. It's just a heavy physical attack to everyone that can high chance of landing a critical hit. This one does not seem too bad. Maybe the MP cost. I actually do not know. I cannot compare it to other ones, but very strong. Vishnu, I do not think was changed in any way. Rama was a new one, but again, Rama is kind of here just for Avatar. All allied attacks, including magic with positive, must go potential to maybe become critical hits. This is also one of those very powerful ones, because it's one limiting factor is a plus next to the move name. If it has a plus, it can crit. That is very powerful. Ramastra, three medium almighty attacks to all foes. I actually have not tested this one out to see if everyone gets hit by three, or if it's just three being done to everyone and it like has to go through a list of them. If there are four enemies, only three of them would get hit. But possibly good, possibly not. I'm not sure. And also Ice Survivor. Survivor skills are still very busted. Increases Ice Attack damage and uh, ensuring lethal attack with one HP in battle. Or endorse lethal attack. It's just a Pleroma with Endure slapped in. It is very busted. Kalki is a um, while in the extra party, increases the likelihood of all allies and eight skills triggering. All allies when they gain the same buffs as the ally becoming uh, as the ally that became incapacitated. So if someone dies, everyone gets their buffs. Ratnamaru. Heavy almighty attack to one foe and H recovered all allies and race stats. This is another one of those demons that was added in that's basically Konanasakiya, but offensive. I don't really know how else to describe it. Tao is still here because I'm on the law path. Satana. Satan A. While in the active party, allies attacks with positive skill effect potential may become critical hits. And increase damage when striking a foe's weakness. Yep, this Satan. Again, Antictheon. Hailstorm of God, which is a severe AoE that pierces as well. It's Ice Age, but AoE. I feel like that should be a bit more expensive, actually, even at plus nine, but... I guess it doesn't really matter that much in the end game because everything is just going to go down so fast. Still very strong. Hachiman. Critical Melody. While in the next party, increase crit, uh, critical damage of, of physical attacks for all allies. 
Then what does Satan be? No clue. It's yet to be added. Is that unnerfed Antichtheon? It is bugged Antichtheon. It's heavy on when he attacked all foes. That lowers their stats by one rank for three turns. This is still buggy. I've seen it give the entire enemy team plus one. So I do not know what, what condition made that happen, but I've seen it happen once. Really dark. All right. And I guess for Hachiman, he has Vorpal Blade, Figment Slash. I think he came with Vorpal Blade on his own and I gave him Figment Slash or one or the other. You didn't know about? I actually do not know. Maybe, but I'm not sure. Not that I can remember. But the big thing for Hachiman is this thing. Jingu's Divine Light. Increases physical attack damage. Chance to counter strength-based attacks with Vorpal Blade. So... If he gets hit by a physical attack, he will just use Warble Blade in retaliation. And then this time, it will ignore affinity, affinities and pierce. So it's a special Warble Blade that happens on counter attacks. But still, please do not think that is the only thing the mod added. This mod was rather well, extensive. Ardha is right there. Hello is right there. Varyokana is right here. With this. Four to eight weak leg attacks to all foes with also a random ass recovery on it, because why the fuck not? Or restoring an eight ally HP ailments will be cured, so can just attack and heal at the same time. There is... Shiwangmu. With Revive 1 out of full HP, no press turns were, are used, as well as add the press turn to the next turn. There's a lot of moves that were added in the mod that are patently busted, in my opinion. Just have no fucking right existing in this goddamn game. Mahakala, Wrathful Flame, 40 uh, weak fire attacks to random foes, pierces, lowers attack and defense by one rack for three turns, enters into a state of concentrate after the attack. I've not tested this, so I don't know if it's done on magic -y or concentrate, the which one, if there are different effects or not. But that's also bullshit. It's just an infinite engine. And while on the party, allies attacks, in, uh, including magic, with positive skill potentials may become critical hits. So again, they can just crit and keep going over and over and over. Some of these are busted, and I feel have no right to be in the game, but that's when that's what you get when you put in mods. Not everything's going to be balanced. Marisi, Shimmer Arrow. While on the next party, increase damage when striking light weakness for all allies and may become critical hits. So at least this is... If you had a weakness, you can be bonus. Uh, you can be incentivized with a critical hit. You're already getting a press turn for hitting a weakness, so it's not as much, and it more would reward him a what's it called? Just knowledge of the opponent's weaknesses. Medium strength based light attack to one foe, and then it enters a state of concentrate after the attack, which is kind of weird because this is strength based, but it gives you concentrate. But that might be just copy-pasted text and actually enters charge. I'm not sure. Again, never tried it. Sati, Crime and Punishment. Adds flashing press turn icons to the next turn based on how many times user's weakness was struck slash user took a critical hit. This is also actually very powerful. So I would say this is actually maybe on level with some of the things in the game. Bit of the higher end ones, I feel, but still, I feel like this one probably could have in some way been in the main game if it was maybe tweaked a little bit more. Just because there probably should be a limit on this or something else. She's hot, but um, Shadow has this apparent, uh, this some uh, Magatsuki skill that I did not really look at yet. Two heavy level based almighty attacks to all foes, enter state of concentration for all allies after the attack. And all charge effects will remain until the next turn. So this gives Magatsui charge to everyone 
after it is used, so everyone can just continue using their charges from us without actually losing it. As well as just Thanks, good damage. Dude. Oh shit, Sudian, thanks so much for the sub. You're awesome. Back from the box of the Doom. Welcome back. Add a bonus press turn per enemy killed in the base game. Yeah, so I, honestly, this feels like it could be in the game base game if it was just explored a bit more. Aside that, I don't know if there were any lower level ones in the f in the special fusion section. But once again, that is in no way the limits of what they added. Let's go through the list. At the very least, you would not have found many in the beginning of these, like, effects. Thankfully, it's not like busted things from the beginning. Heck it. Jack the Ripper. I want to say, yeah, in the 30s is when you would start seeing some of these. Like legally distinct Okami. While in the active party, all allies in battle will gain the same support effect as you. This would have been a early level sort of our Habaki style effect. To which, honestly, kind of cool that you could get that early on. Though I feel like you wouldn't have the buffs to really abuse it too much. Still good. Still very good. Hathor, I believe, was not in the base game. After all, it's busted. Use Inflaming Divinity. And it's Luster Candy. Yeah. When you the guards on attack, cast ability on the attacker, no MP cost. This is probably a bit much. At level 30, this is probably a bit much. Just defend. If they get hit, debilitate. With no MP cost. That is... Very potent for a tank aggro unit to have. Twitch has been very kind to you today. I'm sorry. Hopefully it gets better over time because I don't know what I can do at all. I'm not dropping frames at least. Yeah, at least it doesn't come with taunts. You have to build it yourself. Then, one that I didn't know existed, Queen Frost of all things. Ice Gestalt. We've seen this effect before. Increase the damage of use ice attack based on the ice scope potentials of all allies on the party. This, at the very least, I feel could have just been something that was in the game. Two to weak ice, two to five weak attacks to random foes. Damage increase based on, on the number of foes. That may be a bit, but honestly, since it's weak and ice Gestalt, I feel like this could this probably could have still made it past testing if the numbers were right. I can see this one working. Vivian, I believe, was in the base game. I don't remember some of these. I just don't remember at all. Is that Princess Frost? I don't think so. But also, I don't know in general. She was not? All right. Lady of the Lake. Increase ice attack damage to self. On the next party, increase crit damage of physical attacks for all allies. That's a lot to have just on one passive, actually. This could be a 10% ice, ice damage increase and crit damage increase to the party by 10%, and I would still say that's probably a bit much. At level 34, that's probably pushing it a bit on the power, power ability. I don't know how to say it, power level maybe of the game. But again, if that was maybe a bit higher in the 50s range or 40s, yeah, actually, again, I'd see that maybe work. Maybe. Botus, this demon. On the active party, increased damage when striking electric weeds for all allies. And more damage um, uh, when foes have ailments. So again, ailment abuse as well as just when striking electric weaknesses. Along with a curse of lightning. Or boss skill, yeah. Four weak electro attacks to random foes. Chance inflicting seal. Increased damage on foes that have ailments.
Like, honestly, again, it feels like there's too many... There's a lot of skills that do too many things at once. Like, some of these pat innate skills and other stuff, they feel like they just do a bit too much. Especially when everything else in the game is established to be doing, like, one thing. Really, at most. Then Berserk. To which also, I believe, was not in the base game. But... Actually, might be. At least I remember Vinyl Bomb being a skill. When you take damage from an almighty attack with... Uh, for an attack with Spears effect, equivalent almighty uh, damage to the attacker. Non base. Vinyl Bomb, I feel like, was, though. Charge, Dark Sword, and Mabufula. At least, again, this one feels like it's... Could have been all right in the game. At this level, though... I feel like you would not hit, uh, be on the receiving end of many things with Pierce, but that is something that to work you could work towards, I guess. There's Tom Lin again. Still never fused them. Was Moshuva unique? Ah, gotcha. Also, raw stays. So I'm expecting to be there today, and then veg and relax. I was ho Hold it in by 11 at the late, but guy came in to remove a button or bottom wall decoration. So now the washer and dryer fit. Finally, plug in the stove, socket for a stove, has a smaller bottom hole. Plug in the one, stove cannot be used. Ouch. That sucks. Angelo Frost. Yeah, Frost Ace. Fickle personality. While an Omega Toki effect is active, users attacks with positive skill potentials that strike weakness will be critical hits. So first off, you need an, you need a um, oh my god, Toki effect going on. And you need to hit a weakness, but if you do those two, it's a critical hit. Also, positive skill. So again, like, this has enough, like, restrictions on it, I feel that you probably could make it work well. Or just do it with other things. It probably could have worked. And then one of the first of many Hindu mythology that were just added into this game. Indrajit. While in the active party, increase damage when striking electric weakness for all allies and MP recovery when allies with Omagatoki effects take action. Passive MP regen as long as you have an Omagatoki effect going on. And sweet, uh, electric specialization to hit weaknesses. Take out the MP um, uh, restoration or make that be their unique one and I feel it could have worked. Though I would have had a problem with that, with this thing having drain electric <laughs> this early on. I feel like at level 45, you should be getting at most nulls. Not many drains, if ever. Oh, was well, a good Nithogger. Vengeful Might. Increases user's uh, critical hit damage based on the number of weaknesses user and allies in the active party have. Yeah, should have more weak uh, more weaknesses in general. This, I feel, again, also an effect that is in the base game, or at least similar to it, that it probably could work. It gets the physical survivor skill, which is... In its own way, busted. Uh, increases uh, physical attack damage and ensures some, uh, or an endures lethal attack with one HP once in a battle. And it has two reflects, but three weaknesses. I can make an argument for this actually at around level forty. Like Hanuman's getting him a, a, a repel. I can make an argument for this one if it had better. What's it called? Uh, if it had him a. Like, maybe... Actually, not repel physical, yeah. Not repel physical necessarily at 47. Do you know at the top of your head? What stratum and floor you were uh, currently on in Etrian still have to watch the latest Etrian VOD? We were floor... I think 7. We had gone to 8, but then come back to 7 because that's just how the design worked. That might be in base game. Yeah, I feel like... Resist physical would be the highest I'd give this for the physical resistance. 
And even then, you could probably still say, give it another ailment resistance, like, say, blind or something else. And then, sure, I'd say that's fine. This one is actually kind of interesting. Eternize. When HP reaches zero, an ally in the stock will be sacrificed to restore your full HP. Increases damage based on the number of incapacitated allies in the stock. This demon will stay alive as long as you have fodder for it to eat up to keep going. As an idea, I kind of like it. Almighty Survivor, though, is still busted. Almighty Paroma plus Endure, just in one skill. And it gets Megadola. And it gets Strategize. And Dance and Critical. Again, I feel like this one, I'd probably slot it a bit higher in like 50s, maybe 60s. And honestly, I think this is actually kind of okay. As a gimmick, it's its one thing, and I could see it working out. Yeah, Ouroboros, if it was in a boss form, this path would probably be a thing of, what's it called... It will, uh, if you kill Orbos first, it will eat one of the other allies that has in its um, uh, formation to just fill itself HP back to full and keep going. And plus, the we uh, the less enemies there are on the field, the weaker or the stronger it gets. Yeah, like, honestly, there's nothing unique bullshit about it aside Almighty Survivor. Again, this skill is the only little issues, but at the very least, it is in the realm of issues the only issue this thing has, I feel. Take Almighty Survivor and put in, like, if you want, even just Almighty Pleroma or Endure. And honestly, I think this could work at a higher level in the base game. I actually kind of like it. At least I like the idea of it. Alrone! Alrune. Sweet Temptation. Increased damage when attacking a target that has an ailment. Again, ailment, ailment hate. Ailment enabling ailment teams. I will always like that. Especially for the player. When you either resist or nulls an attack, cast energy drain on the attacker. That is a bit much. That, I feel, is a little bit much. Thankfully, it's not resist, null, um, uh, or dodge, and uh, like absorb or repel. It's just resist or null. But even so, the bonus action, or the bonus action when um, uh, you resist or null, even guard some and sometimes... I feel it's a bit much. You have to really build for it. By this time, you wouldn't have enough skill slots for all that. Yeah, it's 48. You'd have, I want to say, be around here as like your maximum skills. So again, a bit much, but I can see it. I can see it somewhat working. I'd want to look into Sweet Station a bit more, but I could probably see it. Sati, we already saw because they're in the Special Fusion and here. This was done by the mod author, I believe, because if you have pack files in the game, sometimes things can get buggy and not work out. So they put Special Fusions along with normal fusions for some of the ones that were problematic, I believe. So Sati is just the same. Still level 48, just like they were in the other one. Then this fucker. I remember you from fucking Strange Journey. Ame no Futuma, Futo, Fututama. While in the active party, increase the likelihood of allies' innate skills triggering. When summoned from the stock, reverse stat buffs and debuffs for all, all allies. This again is, I believe, two innate skills just smashed into one. The increased likelihood of allies' innate skills triggering, as well as the reverse stat, uh, stat buffs and debuffs for all allies. It'd be part of the strategize team, just to like when you get yourself down to negative two to instantly turn it into plus two. Plus, light and dark survivors right here scares me. The infusion fail only. Yeah, if this was the fusion fail only demon, then I could see this working out actually. Like it'd be a sort of a rare puzzle, a rare little plus to get. Though I think I already just saw two things. First, dark and light survivor. This thing has two endures. And I still do not know if they activate consecutively or at the same time. So, like, if they go to 1 HP, do both trigger, or do they can, can they trigger consecutively? 
Then there's this. It is just null light and dark in one. This draw like crosses over that line for me. This is a bit much, even on a fusion accident. Yeah, here's where I would say, nah, fuck that, you've gone too far. Don't pass go, don't collect 200. No, this should not be allowed. But again, mod balance, it can only do so much. Balder! And at the very least, because of Devil Survivor reasons, I am disappointed that Balder doesn't null everything. But then again, you can't do that. Or Belder, or Balder, yeah. Belder, yeah, not Balder, meh. God of Light. Well, in the extra party, slight HP and MP recovery to all allies when user becomes incapacitated. So they gotta die to give everyone a slight HP and MP increase. Weird, but sure. Heavy light attack to all foes, instant attack weakness, mist rush, light from and hell mask. This just seems all right. I'd give it a weakness to an ailment or something else, because that drain light has no right to exist this early on. But still, this one is actually kind of okay. I'd change that, that absorb to a null, and I'd say it's fine. Or if you want to keep the absorb light, I would say add a weakness to say sleep or charm, and or sleep weakness, uh, he's already was asleep, so weakness to charm or say poison, I don't know, and then it could work out. Hamabari on this early could be a bit more, but if this is like the one demon that gets it early, then I could see that being okay, honestly. Like if this is their one claim to fame, considering that they don't have that much going on with God of Light, I could argue that. Then if you look on the top left, there's a face that should not exist, but is here. Fucking Rido. This jumps over the line, in my opinion, of fucking broken shit. It's honestly, in my opinion, not at Avatar level of busted, but pretty close. Increase the damage of critical hits based on the number of active effects on user. So again, it's the, um, uh, what's it called? Masakado effect style thing of... Increase critical hits, some uh, damage of critical hits based on the number of active effects on users. So, like, concentrate charge work, Makotogi, uh, critical works, um, all the buffs work on that. This, though, is the issue. From the small box. <laughs> How's it going, Death Zero? Well, when you can talk, or when you can hear me, Death Zero, welcome! <laughs> this is not just a Rhydo mod, it is just a bunch of other things. Yeah, if, if I was to, if Rhydo was to be in the game, they would have to be a guest character, or a boss fight sort of thing. Who did this? I can actually link you the mod itself, but this mod adds a bunch of demons. Not just Rhydo, I'm gonna Futotama, it adds some uh, Alrun, it adds a couple others. They're just all added here, and I'm going through all of these. They imported the mod, they imported the models, I believe, from other SMT games. I don't know if Rido was imported from this, but I know a lot of them were imported from the, what's it called, SMT uh, gotcha game. It's called Find It. It's on Game Banana, I believe. Not on Nexus mods. I use Reloaded um, uh, 2 to load the mod manager up. But Rido, Kuzanoa, the fourth. Increase damage based on critical hits, uh, on critical hits based on the number of active effects on user. Strong, but if they had a, if this was a guest character boss fight, I'm all for it. Let them be busted. It's a, it's from, it's a protag or a special guest from another SMT game. Them having a Sautobi. Sure. Especially because when you use a Sautobi with Raido, it does the same thing where he summons a Sout, uh, you're just going to jump up and then come down and do it. Glavanic Slash is heavy strength based electric attack to one foe, Mazandine, and of course, Physical Survivor. This is the one chance where I would say, you know what? You beat them as a guest character boss fight? Sure. Here's their, like, if this was their unique skill, 
like up beyond Sautobi and such. If this was their one thing, I'd say fuck it, do it, yeah, because it's locked to the guest character. They can't get it, no one else can get it. I'm down for that. Safeguard, Critical Aura, Rido the Eternal. High chance of granting Impaler's Animus after user's attacks have been null, drained, or repelled. This. This is why I say this shit goes too far. Hassal Toby. Hits everyone. Fantastic move. Safeguard. Being evade, drain, null, or repel doesn't consume additional press turns. And then Impaler's Revenge. This shit's too much. Especially at level 50, this shit's too much. This should be at least level 60, 70. Especially with that fucking resistance profile. But again, boss fight guest character, you get away with a lot of shit there. I'd say this is actually okay. Yeah, he has to hit the null or repel or anything like that. Yeah. So, honestly, again, I'd actually think this is that honestly okay. If you had to fight for it first, I'd love it. That's what safeguard is for? Yeah, to make sure that you just don't have to worry about your press turns being gone. I saw Toby, then I saw Toby again? Yeah, fucking bullshit. Then we get Dantalian, which as far as I'm aware, is the only other instance in this game that taboo as a fucking skill exists. Because as far as I'm aware, only Loa has it and then just randomly they have it too. Matarakarn, Ice Breath, Mahamon, Mana Aid, Lights, again, Survivor Skills I have an issue with, but sure. And then Fierce War to draw hostility. This looks actually kind of okay. I'd probably see something similar to this demon showing up in the base game and being alright. It seems balanced enough, yeah. But as we get higher, you're going to see levels of bullshit you never thought possible. Let's keep going. Morrigan. War Goddess. While in the active party, greatly increase damage when striking a foe's a force weakness for all allies and may become critical hits. Oh, I skipped one? With Rido Res on Amos, didn't, Rido didn't have any resistance on ailments, and I'm actually okay with that. Moloch? I'm pretty sure Moloch was in the base game, actually. I remember we have to fight it, I think, as a boss. Oh, wait, you mean the model difference, maybe. Yeah, he's the boss. He was in the Demeter quest line, yeah. On the active party, allies fire attacks may become critical hits. Mostly new for this game, then. Yeah. Honestly, Moloch's alright. Yeah, he probably wasn't in the base game, but in Vengeance they added him in, I believe. But, Morgan. War God is pretty strong, actually. Following the active party, greatly increased damage when striking a force weakness. So again, as long as you hit a, a force weakness, so it has they have to move to it first, then you get the bonus damage. And it can become a critical hit. Works out. Ruthless Death Gale. Multiple weak force attacks to one foe. Number fits depend on, users, on user and target's agility. Plus lower the defense of one foe by two ranks for three turns. This... I feel it's just under the line of, of like, busted. Again, I'd imagine this is a boss team when you have to fight. But this thing, basically being what's it called, Lunar, I, what was that hurricane skill that the protagonist can get on a demon that also has a reduced defense by two ranks is a bit much. But as long as it's a boss, I'd say this is actually kind of okay as long as it was their one thing. Then they have, of course, Gaibolg. Medium strength based force attack with pierce to one foe and it always um, uh, lands critical hits. It would depend on the ratio, yeah. If it was like a worse version of the protagonist because I feel you'd have to, then I'd say that's alright actually. Quest Roma, Safeguard, Mazionga, and Resist Electricity.
Honestly, it depends on Ruthless Gay Bog, uh, uh, Ruthless Death Gale, but I'd honestly see this work. He's a Lancer? No, it's Saber, technically, right here. I see the Sword Scabbard right there. But no. I could see this being in the base game, or at least being as an added thing, as a boss you have to fight, or like a subquest you have to do to get her. <clears throat> Is Ruthless Magic base? I don't think so, no. Ruthless Death Gale was added in by the game, or by the mod. But is it magic or strength based? Oh, it is a uh, magic based. Yeah, it doesn't say strength, so I'm assuming it is magic based. And then Gaia Bulg would be the opposite one that's strength based. It's like secure move. Yeah, it's a magic one. The next one that the mod added was Marisi, but again, they're in the Special Fusion as well, just to cover their bases on the pack issues that apparently exist in the game. Oh, the Sukumi Win move? I actually don't know. I actually don't know. I'd never use the move. Yeah, that move is strength. This one on Morgan was magic. Sorry for the confusion. I must confuse as well. This, I believe, was not in the base game. Because I know they're... Oh, yeah. I see Fuzzle Survivor. Not, not in the base game. I should just fucking see that from the get-go. Increases the physical attack damage. Yep, it's physical, pleroma, and endure in one. I still don't like it, but... Hmm. Aside that, honestly, this looks like an alright demon. Looks like a very strong demon, honestly, but when you reach roughly the 60s area, I feel you're allowed to get some, like, game-breaking shit. Not much, but some. Now, is physical fire pleroma or high pleroma? I'm assuming it's pleroma, not high pleroma. Or at least, I hope it is. If it's high pleroma, then it's a whole different level of busted in my mind, and it should not fucking exist, period. But my opinion, at least from what I understand, it is pleroma plus endure from the base game just added in as one skill. Hell, I believe, is base game, and I just never fused them. Never mind. Fuck, I survivor. Never fucking mind, I Survivor. You are not in the base game. <laughs> Call to Helheim. Slightly increases damage based on the number of incapacitated allies in the stock. It's a good effect, and one I believe that already exists in the base game. I believe it's from a higher level demon, but still, I could see that being alright. Multiple weak ice attacks to one foe, and a random attack, and random attacks to foes. Hmm? What? Wait, what? What? Multiple weak ice attacks to one foe, and random attacks to foes. Number of hits depends on users and target's agility. So it's another Lunar Hurricane style move, but this one can randomly be AoE? You get nothing else, right? Okay, I'd want to clarify this random shit. So hits one specific foe and random hits other foes. Okay, actually, that makes more sense. I might, I think I'll just do it on that. So it guarantees a hit on someone, but then the rest of the hits can go anywhere else. But the one person you pick is what's checked for agility, maybe. All right, that seems a bit more fair. Still, I preserve the right to call it busted, but the fairer side of busted. Hecate. Again, the double survivor uh, um, look. I love it. I fucking love it so much.
Lunar Awakening. Increase accuracy and damage for the ally that acts after user when striking a weakness. I feel like this is a move from one of the other demons, so honestly fine. Okay, if it's the way you say Demon Eradicate, then broken. Yeah. Health Trivia. Multiple weak level based dark attacks to one foe. That pierce. Number of hits that might depend on the user and targets another to Lunar Hurricane. God damn it. They really love the Lunar Hurricane effect. Along with Dark Survivor. And this thing we got Enduring Soul. And funny enough, I actually don't mind Enduring Soul. Because fucking Hayataro gets it earlier than this. So I'm actually kind of okay with Enduring Soul at level 60. And then we have Ma Gamori. While in the active party, when your or the Nahobino's HP reaches zero, an ally in the stock may be sacrificed to restore you your his H his full HP. This mm. I wanna say it's busted. But I could I'd be willing to hear a gar an argument about this just being very strong. Of course, dark. Of course, you have to have a survivor skill because everyone fucking does at this point. I think this passive is just interesting because it's technically a chance to heal you to full revive this demon and the Nahobino if you have something to be sacrificed for it. I'm, I'm torn on this. I could go either way. I'd probably turn this not from... I would probably put this one at the medium area we heal instead of the full heal, but yeah. Zhang Kui. Crippling Blow. Chance of instant kill when striking a weakness or landing a critical... Uh. Chance of instant kill when striking a weakness or landing a critical hit. It's what Abaddon has, I believe. What Abaddon and Matador have, yeah. Honestly, good. Deathbound and Widow Baryon, I feel you wouldn't get this early in 60, but maybe. Impaler's Animus as well, and High Fist Floroma and Hades Blast. The skill that feels should be toned down a bit, but at least the innate skill and resistances seem all right. Mahama Yuri is another one that I don't recognize, which means it's probably in Japan. He is known as a known to remove for, um, fortune, fear, and poison. High fist from a stricken uh, seventy-seven in base. I could see that being brought down if you want to like seventy-five and move some demons around, but I could see it working out. You'd have to just assassin such a bit. Though again, I will say this. I repel in 60 the fuck no. Sure, Geary can get it because he's special, but still, no. Fourth promo, Endure, Diem Rita, Abyssal Mask, Wind Breath, and Blossoming Cyclone. And he has four weaknesses, yeah, in exchange. Heavy fourth attack to one foe that pierces, and a large HP recovering to allies. I mean, Mother Harla has a repel at 62, but Mother Harla is a fiend. You have to fight and find your way up to it. That's where I say Mother Harla gets a pass. Plus special fusion requirements. This is just a normal ass fusion. You right there? But I guess this is the start of what I'm going to call busted territory. If only because it's thing, it's moves that let you replace a healer with a damage dealer, and they just do bonus shit on top of it. Let them thrive again. <laughs> okay, Nocturne the Thone Separate Beast.
All right. Azura. Increase the damage of users' physical attacks based on the da number of hits dealt by allies during this turn. So it's that one physical... It's the physical version of that one skull that we saw in the early levels, where multi-hits were would let you reign supreme for a while. But not this one, right? Yeah, I don't think it was this one. And of course, physical survivor. Because fucking everyone. Enduring soul critical aura. Yeah, I don't think it was this Azura. God bless our Habaki. And then Murmur. Increase user's crit rate and critical hit damage based on the number of weaknesses user and allies in the active party have. That's... Gog Magog has it, I believe. They have a version of this, but not this. This is Masakado's... Uh, uh, this is Masakado's buff, but... It's for everyone, and it's counting on weaknesses rather than unique buffs. This is Gog on crack. Yeah, it's Masakados. Because Masakados is the increased crit rate and um, uh, damage based on buffs. This is that, but it's weaknesses that user and allies have in the party. So if you have Gogma Gog and other things that just have a lot of weaknesses, then you're then you're really thinking about damage. Oh wait, hold on. Dark Survivor. I should just expect it at this point. Kalki. Eternal Order. All in the active party increase likelihood of all allies and skills triggering, and all allies will gain the same buffs as any ally that becomes incapacitated. If someone dies, everyone gets their buff. Ratnamaru. Heavy Almighty attack to one foe, H recovery to all allies, and raises the stats of all allies, and raises all stats by one rank for three turns. This is the first instance of Almighty Busted Move. It is a step down from Freikugel, I believe, because Freikugel, I, be I want to say, is severe, so this is just hot, a uh, heavy, that also heals everyone and luster candies. This is a bridge too far. Yeah, this would be a Magatsui skill. And also comes with base high Yuma heal plus one because this also comes with a heal skill for some fucking reason by game code to benefit from this. Heal Pleroma and Enduring Soul. Getting high heal and heal pleroma in your own package. What the fuck? And you start with the with the upper one before you get the lower one. What the hell is this demon? And oh yeah, that's right. This demon is a key member to what I say is the most busted move in this mod. Avatar. To be fair, it's a Magatsui skill. You need four demons in total to use this. One on the field and three, the rest in the stock if you want. But everyone gains succession buff. Which I should not need to tell you is beyond fucking busted. If you think about strategize, this is the straw that breaks the Eiffel Tower. It is completely busted. Oh, 63 basis. No, it's not. Fuck you. At no level. Would I accept everyone in the party getting succession? None! 120, still fuck no! Bye, Susan. Madam Whitesnake. While in the active party, allies' ice attacks may become critical hits. Allies um, uh, with Omega Toki effects will have multi, um, uh, multi attacks maximum possible hits increased. Honestly? Aside the allies' ice attacks could become critical hits, this is just a normal demon. Ignore the survivor because everyone has fucking survivor. Even getting Glacial Blast, again, it matches the kit. I'm actually kind of okay with this. 
Ice Breath and the Glacial bla uh, Blast. Getting Dant as well. She's very well off. I would say if this was in the base game, it would be probably in the 70s. A bit more resistant. But she would be the pinnacle of the multi-hit extravaganza that the game tries to push. But I could see it swinging. Though it'd be, it'd be just in the base game recognized as a strong bat. I did get Makala. Repel. In exchange for four weaknesses. Fuck some of this other shit. Like even Kalki should have more weaknesses than that. Should be weak to at least two ailments and one regular asthma uh, element. Now they got the Quaddle. This one is A. Sactyl. Akatil. Something like that. While in the active party, allies' fire attacks may become critical hits. Allies who draw enemy hostility may survive a fatal blow with one HP. That's unique, at least. Again, the crit... I feel like you gotta pick one. Either fire... Fire attacks could become critical hits. Because it doesn't say um, uh, they have to be weaknesses. Just fire will instantly have a chance to become critical hits. And also, someone has host um, uh, who draws enemy hostility just gets endure tacked on as well. Let's just low 80. All that is fine. Yeah. Like this, again, doing too much in one move. Has the second part, I believe. Yeah. Chimera does... Uh, what's it called? I think another demon might have it as well. I'm forgetting, though. But there are a couple of demons that can draw aggro to themselves or someone else. Again, I would think of Onyakopon, which can give someone else hostility, uh, hostility aggro. And this just also makes sure that they have Endure as well on top of it. Using Katsukoto base, yeah. Trisagion at level 67, I have a small issue with. Killing Wind at level 67, I have a small issue with. Having one fucking weakness, I have a small issue with. The fact that she has Fire Avatar, which is Fire Plurima plus Critical Zealot, I have an issue with a little bit. Do you have a Survivor? Thank God you don't have a Survivor. If you had Avatar and Survivor, then this is the new level of Busted. Types of Chaos, Dance, and Critical. Hold on, what's the Avatar? <laughs> Avatar is Fire Pleroma plus Critical Zealot. Except not the redu reducing him of regular attacks. It's just critical. Again, busted. <laughs> I love how you're like, wait, hold on, what'd you say? <laughs> it's Zealot without the downside and Pleroma. This, I can imagine this on Surter is amazing. Oh, God. There are the plus sides to some of these things, at least. I'll show that in a little bit. Then we have Mahakala. And yes, BB guy, we know the avatars for everyone. Drain Dark, High Fire Prom, uh, Maragi Baryon, Critical Zella, Concentrate, Hades Blast, Wrathful Flame. Four to eight wheat fire attacks to random enemies that pierces also lowers their attack and defense by one stage and a free concentrate at the end of the action. You are putting way too much into one skill. Like, honestly, even the four to eight wheat fire attacks that pierce on its own is actually very strong that on its own is busted lower attack and defense by one rank for three turns you need to be a boss for that to be justified concentrate on to after that no you've done too much you've gone too far even without wrathful oh yeah divine decree while in the active party all, all allies attacks including magic with positive skill potentials may become critical hits so, so the requirement is have a plus next to the move name they can become crits 
<laughs> shit like uh, shit like those uh, self-made Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yes, you get that. I, you know what? Let's just be half full. Let's just be I'm half full, happy. Let's be happy that instead of Critical Zealot, they don't have my, what was it called? Fire Avatar on top for no fucking reason. Then this thing is just straight up busted. It was on Lamu, yeah. Honestly, that's fine. Wrathful Flame is the big issue for me on this. It does three things when it should do at most two if it's a boss. No, there's a reason. <laughs> okay, even the mod said this is too much. Let's tone it down a bit. I, I didn't even... I, my brain didn't recognize Dark Drain. I'm looking at other shit going, this is suddenly fair and balanced. No, I should not be changing my fucking... I should not be changing my level of acceptance based on everything else. No, you're right. Drain Dark has no place in this fucking demon at 70. <laughs> and 70 magic. The 70 magic, I'm actually kind of okay with. If only because even some other... Even some other demons in the base game can reach 70 magic just fine. Though it would require lower level demons being brought up to that level. And the biggest culprit of that is Alice. Not giving a shit, Oz can reach 90 magic before she reaches, I want to say, 60 level. Then we get this guy. Elkonig. I don't even know how to say this. Tree dude! Yep. Figment of Darkness. While in the active party, raise all ally stats to max for three turns when user becomes incapacitated once per battle. Bot. Hold on. Kill the bot. This I could actually see working. And hear me out on this. It is a very strong buff, but it's a once per battle buff. And it requires the death of an ally unit. Yeah, similar to Krasik and Kudlak. I can see this working just fine. Though, you see the avatar right there. You see Drain Electric down on the bottom. But for some reason, this fucker has a passive skill at the top of the skill list. What is that? <laughs> Greatly increases maximum HP and MP. Greatly decreases chance of getting afflicted with ailments. That's actually not as bad as I was thinking. Admittedly, I was about to say, watch this fucker just randomly say, on guarding a hit, instantly cast Freikugu or some shit. Mamudo Baryon, I feel also at level 70, you're pushing it. You're pushing it a bit, but if this is the one thing they had, sure. Maziudine and like Avatar is a bit rough. J oh, wait, sorry, my fucking, my fucking fault. I didn't scroll down. <laughs> Drain electricity. Electric survivor. So you have the avatar and the survivor skill. And fucking thunder rain. This man is just Zeus. In tree form. Found later than we should have. Now I'm sad thinking about it. There's just so many demons here. That we have not seen in a while. Gotten from the gacha game. And I'm like, thank god they have models that we can use. Eating his words a compilation. <laughs> Avatar Survivor, Plumeroma, High Plumeroma. Yeah. Because also, remember, this increases electric attack damage. This increases electric attack damage. As far as I'm aware, these can stack with Pleroma and High Pleroma as well. This thing is getting quad-boosted electricity skills with a plus five base. And also Thunder Rain. Let's just be happy that the developer, or developer, the mod creator, by the grace of God, didn't say, you know what? You don't have enough. Let's give you the Pierce Electric Skill Narukami, because why the fuck not? Uh, 
All right, next demon, Maya. Illusionary world. The damage for allies that ha increased damage for all allies uh, that have ailments. When users' action consume more than one press turn icon, adds one press turn icon next turn. This is very strong. Why do you have a... That's another combo one for, again, ailments and that. I actually kind of like it. Vanity, though. High chance of inflicting Mirage to all foes. That also reduces one press turn icon at the start of the user's next turn. I don't know how to read that. Does that reduce the opponent's press turn icons or user's press turn icons? Our press turn icons. Because if this is just Mirage Ma Demi Fiend skill, then... Yeah, this is too much. But energy drain, debilitate... Ma Vanity will. <laughs> yeah. Mudo Baryon, Great Curse Siphon, Dark Roman, Mamudo Baryon. So actually, the wording myth, you get fucked, not the enemy. Yeah. If it's Wheelu the Preston icon, then I actually might be okay with it, because she has a thing. Because then her thing right here would actually work to try and balance out what I'm assuming would be a very high chance of Mirage infliction. Maybe. Unless, of course, this is worded improperly and it actually still does the, the what's called the Demifiend skill. In which case, yeah, this thing's busted. Next, we have Echidna. Snick. Fickin' Womb. While in the active party, when an ally becomes incapacitated, all allies restore full HP and gain the same buffs as the incapacitated ally. This, I want to say it's just a little bit up there. And part of me is saying that because of the restore HP thing. The buff one, if you want to do the buff one, sure. If you want to do the HP one, sure. But both at the same time feel like it's a bit much. And let's not forget two survivor skills. She has double endure. And of course, you'd give her an enduring soul as well, because why the fuck not? She has three lives. But given how situational this is, I could maybe hear an argument about this. The Absorb Ice, I'm actually okay with, but I'd want her to have more weaknesses to balance out, or maybe remove one of the Light or Dark uh, Nulls. Lakshmi? She was in the base game, I believe. Yeah, she was in the base game. I don't see any of the other problematic skills. Another Lilith. Because, of course, there's the uh, the original Lilith that we had from other stuff, but also the one from, what's it called, that this game added. And yes, what you're seeing right there is stupid, and the game knows it, and it's not letting the, the mod creator do that shit without being called out. Condition Entrop Entropy is the basic-ass skill that she can spam now. This is far too much. It is just blatantly Magatsuki skill, but on command. Yes, no, we do not allow this in, the, in this place, too. For free, too, yeah. <laughs> High Dark Pleroma, Mother Earth, and Temptation. A unique one. Dark chance, high chance of an ailment. That's still kind of alright. Good entropy, though, is the big thing right here. I'm just like, this is the reason you would do this. While in the active party, greatly increases damage uh, when striking dark weakness for all allies and may become critical hits. Alright, I guess, but. Good entropy is a bit too much. Drain electric, I feel, is still maybe a bit much. But I guess since the since the I'm gonna assume what happened here is the develop or the I keep saying developer, but the mod author tried to add the skill as a base thing, but because the game recognized that it is a Magasui skill, it just also puts the cost as Magasui rather than MP. And that's what like did it right there. 
That's the reason you see that and not maybe what they would have stenciled in as an MP cost. You can make this shit cost 150 and I'd still say that's too cheap. All right. Ji Wang Mu, again, here. Same thing, like I said, available in the special fusion, but here they are again, just different. Or because, like, sometimes they can not appear. The mod author is copying their bases. When we're storing an ally's HP, ailments will be cured. Honestly, solid, standard, I see this, I just, I know it's in the base game. I must go squad, yeah. This is the one thing that's busted on her. Peach of Immortality. It's a revive, at no cost, that gives you a press turn next turn. This is the thing that's a bit much. Aside that, though, she's fine. Especially at this level, she's fine. This is the one thing that's a bit much for her. Yeah, it's in a weird space of... A little weak for Magatsuhi, but a bit strong for... Actually, I know it's... I think it's actually okay for Magatsuhi. It'd just be very situational. We've seen other situational ones as well, so I'd say that's all right. It's just one of those weird ones that probably wouldn't just be intentionally made to not see that much use. Now this next one, though. Luke. Temuldenak, however you say that. While an Omagatoki effect is active, users attacks with positive effects potentials will deal increased damage and be a critical hit if striking a weakness. This, I want to say, is busted, but a part of me is saying it's actually not that much. I don't know why I want to say it's busted. I just feel like it is, but I can't think of a reason why. So you need a, a Mogatoki effect to be active with positive skill potentials. But if those two conditions are met and you hit a weakness, it's crit. Teslam Summa Strike. Heavy fourth attack to one foe. That pierces, of course. Add heavy light attack ma, and heavy light attacks to foes. Chance of instant kill and strike. Okay, that's a bit much. That's a bit much. It's a single target piercing wind attack that also does a light attack at the end of it. Just a heavy AoE light attack. Bit much. Also, white Draco strike, figment slash, survivor because everyone has to have a survivor skill. And that's a no. I ain't fucking giving you repel force. That ain't happening. Mm-hmm. They need to go I actually kind of like. Some of these things have... They feel like they have enough guardrails unless you can find a way to, like, implant weaknesses or something. So, yeah, like, maybe charge would be useful, but I'm not sure. Maybe dance because it makes four or less than five. Yeah. It feels weird seeing Figment Slash. At level 73. I don't know why. I think it's actually gotten at around this level, but still it feels weird. And then Kali. A different Kali. Physical Gestalt. Increase the damage of used physical attacks based on the number based on physical skill potential of allies there. Health thrust stream slash black trigger strike. Honestly, alright. Yeah, if it was 74, then this is just one level earlier. Because it's Lug, I guess. Drain Force is 96. Yeah, again. I'm not giving... Oh, no, this is Repel Force, not Drain. I'm not giving them Drain Force still, even at 73. And then... Oh, right, Rama. This one we already mentioned a little bit. 
But again, divine decree. While all in the active party, I'll lay the tax including magic with positive skill potentials may become critical hits. Strong, but all right. Brahmastra is three medium almighty attacks to all foes. And I'm under the impression that this is every opponent gets hit by three almighty attacks, which is ludicrous. Glacial Blast, sure. Ice Survivor. Drain Ice is once again a fuck no at level 74. Ice Age. I feel like this would have been the last one you get. And why the fuck are you getting High Almighty Plurum unless you're going to be spamming this? I feel like you would go and lean into one of these. Like, they'd have this. They would have this and maybe, say, Glacial Blast and Ice Plur High Pleroma, maybe. But that's it. But no. Ice Age is 86. High Ice is 87. Okay, yeah, then probably not High Ice. Just Ice Pleroma as well, then. Ice Age heavy attack that pierces. I, I'd be feeling like some of these, like specifically these ones that lead to Avatar, would be part of like a would be a part of like a quest. In which case, in that case, I'd be maybe okay with Ice Age. But again, it'd be tied to something like a quest to find all of these leading up to Krishna. Then Athena, and this one as well, this version of Athena. Grace of the Olive. When you're the guards on attacks, cast Akashic... No. No. No, I ain't fucking allowing this shit. That's... A lot. That's a lot of free Akashic arts on just random ass people if, some, if they do that. Medium physical attack to all foes that lowers their attack and defense by one rank for three turns. Strong, but if it's a unique, I feel like this might be okay. It'd be strong, but okay. Mahamabarion, maybe. Figment Slash, I feel okay if that was your big thing. And High Fist Floroma, Luster Candy, Murder's Glee, and there are the Kashi cards. I'd want to change this innate skill to something else. I don't know what. But I'm actually kind of okay-ish with this I'm a demon as it stands. Aside the that innate skill. Like, this would be level 75, 76, and you could say this is probably level 77 or 78. But I would say this is borderline okay. Still a bit too strong. Grace of the Olive, in my opinion, is just still way too busted. And then Koga Saburo. Koga Saburo was not in base game, I believe. We see that survivor right there. Dragon of Defense. While in the active party, allies' fourth attacks may become critical hits. Allies' Omentogi effects will have mul uh, multiple hit attacks, max possible hit increased. Again, I feel like you're doing too much on an innate skill. Pick one or the other, but either one of them would be okay in my mind. Myriad Slashes, Zeobarion, Floral Gust, Force Survivor, High Force Pleroma. I feel like you're getting that a bit early. Abyssal Mask, and once again, Drain Elect is a fuck no. No. Stop trying to put drains on things as inheritable skills before level, what, 80 at earliest, maybe. Eighty-seven. Yeah, I'm saying just eighties because stipulation of boss or uh, end of quest line things, maybe, but no. This is a. I wouldn't say this is actually a broken demon. I would just say this is the demon that gets things too early, so you can pass them around. But still, that thankfully doesn't matter. I'll tell you why in a second. The next one is the demon that I found and instantly clutched saying, you are broken, I want to abuse you.
Say hello to Guan Yu. The man, the myth, the legend. Loyal God of War. While in the active party, increase crit damage of physical attacks for allies. Increase crit damage based on the number of active effects on user. So again, Magatsuhi um, uh, or uh, uh, Masakado's effect uh, where it counts some um, uh, buffs on the user. The big thing, though, is also they get drained physical. Fuck no. Critical Zealot, High Fist Roma, and Physical Survivor, along with Dunham Gladi. And Myriad Slashes, which is not that bad, honestly. No. Uh, Dragon Blade is the big bullshit. Heavy physical attack to one foe and weak physical attack to all f uh to foe to foes, all foes in general. That pierce and always land as a critical hit. They uh, drain and repel physical as new game plus. But look at the resistance. Yeah, no physical at the base and resist all ailments is boss level resistances, if I'm being honest. The fact that they can get drain physical is already a lot. But no, Dragon Blade is with this with this effect is busted. It is a heavy pierce physical attack along with Yabusame shot at the end. That's just what it is. And yes, when I installed I installed this mod at the beginning of the playthrough of New Game Plus Plus, I saw Guan Yu and I said, "You're bullshit enough for me to use." And let me be honest, they have trivialized every content I have found up until this point. This thing should show already how busted this mod is. Hachiman. Increase active ma while in the active party, increase crit damage of physical attacks for all allies. So your innate skill is just AoE critical zealot. Without the downside. And you have a passive as your first skill. Increased physical attack damage. Chance to counter uh, strength-based attacks with Vorpal Blade that pierces. And Vorpal Blade itself doesn't have pierce. It's just a high uh, physical attack to all foes with a high chance of landing critical hits. This on its own is amazing. This is up. This is almost upgraded Yabusame shot without the crit. It's, some, uh, like I said, yeah, stronger to Tanamakia. But the fact that if you... If you get hit by a strength-based attack with Vorpal, you can just counter with Vorpal Blade that pierces is busted. It's strong. It's very strong. Also, of course, you get Fizz Survivor, because why the fuck not? And also, who here has played Nocturne? Because you'll recognize this. Sword of Hallel. Highly in increase the damage of users' physical attacks based on the number of hits dealt by allies during the turn. We saw this lower level. Jesus, Ose. <laughs> Who has myriad slashes, fry Google fizz survivor, high fizz pleroma, once again, you're getting that early, and critical aura. And then there's Flores Hallel. High, uh, highly increases the damage of users' light attacks based on the number of hits dealt by allies during the turn. Hamabarian, Luster Candy, Light Survivor, Mahamabarian, Highlight Pyroma, and Resist Dark. Highlight Pyroma is goddamn. You have a resist, you have a repel light on you. Both of you do. What the fuck? But if I were to justify this, this would be a double battle, like a double boss battle, similar to if you're in Canon of Vengeance, how you fight Zeus and a Mug. What's called Odin? Because these two were su uh, summoned companions in Nocturne. In one of the routes. You have to fight... I forget what her name is, but she summons these two in the second half of the fight. And that's where they come from, I believe. So, like, if they were part of a team battle fight like that, then I could say, like, you know what? Sure, they can be allowed to some extent as, like, a reward. But still survivors I have an issue with, as well as the the high pleromas, they shouldn't get that. She with a ball? Ah, gotcha.
Yeah, at least not drain light. Hey, look, look at that. Izanami. Yamotsu Okami. While in the active party, increases damage when striking weaknesses for allies. Magic attacks used by Lady Mag Megami and Feme may become critical hits. I don't know that many Lady Megami and Feme units, so I don't know how often they'd be attacking. I feel like they probably would be more... Actually, no, they might, if, like, they have their one sig like signature sort of physical... Not physical, like, elemental attack. Maybe. What's Thousand Curses? Heavy dark attack to one foe. High chance of instant kill. Add a two to five... No. It's... <laughs> I forget what the name of it is, but it's um, uh, Mudo Baryon, I think. Along with um, uh, Thunder Rain at the end of it. No, fuck that. No, why are you trying to double dip this much? No. Along with the Lex Survivor. And a high dark pleroma. And rep Fuck no! You don't get repel eyes. You don't get to go to the cake factory and eat all that shit in front of us? No. Fuck that. And actually... Was Anio in the base game? No. No, you were not. With this shit, no, you were not. <laughs> Rear Demeter and Lakshmi. So they probably could make that work until a team, yeah. No way in fucking hell would you be under level 90 with these new skills you would randomly, randomly fucking get. You have repel electricity. Why are you looking for drain on top of it? What is Flame of 12,000 Angels? While in the active party, increase damage when a Fury Divine or Herald Demon ally strikes a weakness. It's tied to certain races and what's it called? It's only when they hit weaknesses. I'd say that's maybe all right. Lightning of God. What is that? Severe electric attack to all foes that pierces. Wait, that's final boss Lucifer's move? What? 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 I never knew the name of the move. Is that actually just Lucifer's move? Please tell me you're fucking with me here. I want to give the mod author some credit. They would not just take a boss move and put it here. Magasushi, move up to the regular skill. Sure. Invent their own string of bullshit skills. Sure. But not just take a boss skill and put it on here on a common ass demon, right? They wouldn't do that. It's unique. It's... I... Fuck. It's mad at Luther's skill. Fuck. Ah, fuck. Also, look at that. We were talking about Nocturne earlier. Go Zutano. Supreme Might. While an Amogatoki effect is active, users attack with a positive skill potential, will deal increased damage. Increases damage based on the number of capacitated allies, and the they pulled a Yu-Gi-Oh. It's going off the text box. I'm assuming number of capacitated allies in the stock, because that seems like it'd be the most busted. This... Needs to be condensed down and also be removed, I feel. It is too strong. If you use critical with this, users attack with positive skills will deal more damage. So Hades Blast. And it will deal more damage based on the amount of things dead in the stock. I'm imagining a world of this thing using Figment Slash with an entirely dead stock.
Also, what the hell is Mantra? Why do you have a buff in the beginning? <laughs> no! God, no! He needs to fuck you! You are not allowed in my quality assurance team of balancing. Fuck that! <laughs> No one, aside the protagonist, should not only get them a, a evergreen dance, but evergreen dance plus bonus shit on top of it. This fucker's trying to play Uno with a deck of nothing but draw fours. No. Heavy physical attack to awful is critical aura, high defense for Oma. Again, fuck, no, fuck off. Mark Arkaja, Akasha cards, 77, I could hear a debate on that. Great life spring, sure, whatever, yeah. Not fucking Mantra and Supreme Might, these two can fuck right off, no. And you get charge and critical on top of Torrent of Chaos, why? Hugging elephants. Kangi Ten, I've last seen you in Devil Survivors, I believe. Kangi Ten's mystery. When using a healing effect on an ally, the target may have a random stat raised. When you either resist or nulls an attack, chance to cast Ruin and Grace. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is Ruin and Grace? It's not in her kit at all. Summary Karm, Freikugel, Mediarahan, Almighty Avatar. This has its own issues again, but oh god. Null Ice, thank you for holding back and not giving them Absorb or Repel. Almighty Survivor, never mind, I take it back. What are you doing with all that shit? Then High Almighty Pleroma, you do not get this below level 90. Fuck off. Can I see that again? When the user resists or nulls an attack, chance to cast Ruin and Grace. What does Ruin and Grace say? I don't know. It's nowhere. Nowhere on this demon's kit does it say what Ruin and Grace is. Considering the lore of it, I'm assuming because it's supposed to be two different gods smug hugging or something, one being offense, one being healing, I'm willing to best for all I know. Found out the skill in the gacha? Wait, really? Inflicts physical damage, power 240, with pierce and a 50% crit hit rate on a single enemy, and heals all party members, power 80, if the attack is successful. You know, I never thought to look up the actual name of these things in the gacha. I genuinely never thought of that. God damn. That's bullshittingly powerful. Whenever you resist or null, and you have three nulls and one resist. And then, who here has played Fate Grand Order? Because we got Angramayu. We got the Angry Mango. Everything evil. While in the active party, ailment, efficacy, and insta kill chances will go up for all allies. And um, uh, almighty attacks may become critical hits. You have Antictheon to lower everyone's defense, and Toxic Spray to have a chance to inflict poison and decrease their defense even more for no fucking reason. Mist Rush and Almighty Avatar, because that's allowed to exist. Thank you for going no light and not repel light, because you already have an incredible resistance le uh, like layout. You were this all ailments and you repel three random ass things. This demon is part of what I assume that the mod author was trying to create in the ailments are very viable now category. It's one part of it. 
Azeroth is here with Master of Hell. While on the active party, increase increase some uh, crit damage of, of physical attacks for all allies, and greatly increase the damage of users and allies um, have already taken. A combined act com combined eight actions or more. So yeah, this thing is not as strong, I feel, but still very strong. What is this? I feel like that's a no. Is it just me or is that a fuck no? One to two severe physical attack to random uh, foes. Thereafter, add one press turn icon for every defeated foe or random foes for one turn. Man of the Ken doll? Yeah. Also, High for the Feroma? I feel you should not get. Impale of Animus? Yes, Critical Zealot? Yes, Drain Light? No! This is a bit much, but only in specific places. I feel Master of Hell is okay. Lord Astaroth, I feel, is maybe a bit strong. You should not get High Flip Feroma and Drain Light in one kit, though. Maria. This would have been, this would be the healer that enables uh, the ailment team, I believe. Black Beckoning. Greatly increased damage for allies that have ailments. So it will help if you give yourself ailments somehow, or if you get an ailment. When all stats are raised, increase the amount of HP or MP restored. And then there's Black Lullaby. Slight HP and MP recovery for all allies and raise the stats by one rank for three turns. And you could give yourselves poison. This is very strong. There's no reason you need to get Drain Physical. High Ice and High Eel in one kit is amazing and stupid. Enduring Soul plus Boon Boost DX and this whole thing, it's, I feel, way too synergetic and strong. This would have to be a... This would be like at the end of the game when you do the Maria quest line normally. And you're right there talking about this would be one of the options, I feel. It would be route locked, and it'd be very fucking strong. But I feel this could maybe work. I would just remove Drain Physical, you don't need that. And I would remove one of these. You pick whichever one you want, but... This kid is already so fucking good. Then there is SMT4 Krishna. This is the one, the last piece you would need to get Avatar and give everyone succession. This is a bridge too far for me. This, even at the Magatui scale, should not fucking be allowed to exist. In fact, you also get Drain Dark, two survivors, Narukami, and kin Killing Wind. That is so much. Plus, you can do two attacks, each with four weak attacks of a certain element that also have a chance to inflict an ailment. Any ailment. It's so fucking much loaded into one kit. I feel like the mod creator loved SMT4 and decided to import Krishna and make him just a little bit stronger anyways. This is just so fucking strong. Then Cthulhu. I had mentioned this, actually I mentioned a couple of these already when we were in the, what's it called, section of looking at the, at what I had made in my current team. But Call of Relay. Uh, ailment and instant kill chance will go up and greatly increases damage when attacking something that has an ailment. Lost Sanity can inflict any ailment and hits four to eight medium uh, almighty attacks. This would be a unique one for a boss, of course. Great Curse Siphon, Repel Physical, God fuck that no. Almighty Pleroma, high and normal. Almighty Survivor. He has so much.
Cthulhu is just strong. As expected of an ancient one. If they were a boss demon, I'd allow a surprising amount of this. I'd make them level 85 or 90, and then actually I'd say everything is okay. I would have these this be a route-specific boss demon. Yeah, I'd make it as like a overworld boss that show that you can only fight in certain routes. But I can see this honestly working. Nothing at this level is too outside their own possibility if it's unique. Like unique to this demon alone. Then we got Seraph. Pure holy fire. While in the active party, greatly increase damage when striking with fire weakness for all allies and may become critical hits. So again, it's one of those uh, ones where you need to hit a weakness first off, but it can become crit and deal more damage. Prominence is kind of up there, though as a unique this, this late in the game, that's actually kind of okay. Trisagion, this late in the game, I'd hear an argument for this being okay. High Fire Pleroma. Again, level 80-ish in the 80 range. I'd be okay with this. <clears throat> Mediarhan. Dream Dark, I would say, is a bit over the line. If you change it to, like, Null, or even something to, like, cover the ice weakness naturally, I'd say this is actually on curve a bit. Maybe a little bit above, but it's still okay. Then this fucker. Tezcat Lipoca. While in the active party, allies' dark attacks may become critical hits. When someone from the stock reverses stat buffs and debuffs for allies besides self. This is Amanazakos and I believe maybe one or two other demons. This thing is the part of the strategizism uh, package. Put out a bunch of demons that reduce your stats and then use throw out this person to flip them into positive stats. Again, BB guys, some demons are in the special and the um, uh, normal summons just because they were trying to um, uh, make sure that the demons would always be visible because sometimes playable can just, they can just not show up. Now, let me guess. Rappel Light? I don't know. They have Dark Avatar, because of course. Why did... Okay, this is actually kind of alright. Null Light instead of Rappel. The fact you're a vile means you get Impaler's Glory as well. Honestly? Yeah, we can see which demons are given preferential treatment. This one's kind of alright. Space Maria there. Oh yeah, Ball the Bull. This design of Ball. Lord of the Dead. When the user resists or nulls an attack, chance to counter with a medium dark attack that pierces. Then do bullshit. Tetracarn. At no cost. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Did you resist or null something? Well, you're gonna hit by get hit by Almighty at no cost to you. <laughs> That's hilarious. <clears throat> Great chaos. Heavy dark attack to one foe, and then four weak electric attacks to random foes that pierce, that can also seal. It's not thunder rain, not two to five, it's just four. Shock bound, Moodle Burial, and Dark Survivor, because of course, high electroma, and then Great Curse Siphon. This one is... 
strong, but also funny, because they have a built-in mechanism of you can get yourself killed. The innate, I feel, is almost a meme of just, all right, better hope it doesn't proc, or if, if it does, you're going to get hit by Mega Dolons exclusively for that remainder of the turn. Then another version of Vishnu. Yeah, Satan will just do nothing but Mega Dolark until the end of his turns. <laughs> God of Ubiquity. While in the active party, allies in battle will gain the same support effects as user. Slightly decrease the amount of magic between... Oh my god, no. Oh my fucking god, no. You are made for the strategize team. He has charge as well. Yeah, if he impalers, he gives everyone impalers. Thank God he doesn't have it. He only has charge. But even then, the fact that this person gives the same buff to everyone means they are part of the, uh, what's it called, strategize team of just throwing everything around. Especially because they also reduce the amount of Magatsui it costs. So if you give this guy impalers and uh, animus as the random skill, he just gives it to everyone. Yeah. Plus two survivors, because of fucking course he does. Oh no. Heavy, light, and dark attack to all foes. Lowers all stats on all foes by one rank for one one turn. Why one turn? I mean Boon Boost DX makes it a three turn thing. But still. Yamamudo and Mahama Barian in one attack that also has a random debilitate. When you level them up to 88, it's just, it's full uh, full debilitate added in. Cuz it says only for one turn, which is weird. I wonder how they would have added that into the game. Null fire is actually okay at this uh, level honestly to cover your weakness. We're a demon. But honestly, again, we're at level 87. A lot of things are going to just be allowed to fly. Just be bitched at for being a bit too strong. Eggdrasil! Okay, no. Here's something I would bitch about. A level 9... Any demon that you can fuse that on its own base has over 100 in a stat is a bit much. When the user guards an attack, chance to counter with a HP-based Almighty attack, then greatly decreases damage until to all allies until next turn. Does that mean that if you guard an attack, you counter attack and then cast Kanabi Veil? Yeah. That is very strong. I wonder what the HP-based Almighty attack is. Did they take a standard physical HP-based attack and tell it in the game files this is now Almighty? Or not? Because here's Frykugel, Cluster Candy, Tetracorn, Almighty Survivor, because of course, Enduring Soul, Dekunda, and High Almighty Pleroma. 90 this is 95, 96, 97, so High Almighty Pleroma is again allowed to work. Yeah, he uses Almighty Power Punch, I guess. 94, a lot of things are allowed to pass. High Almighty Pleroma is acceptable here. These skills are acceptable here. And why the fuck are you given Strategize? You know what? Sure. Again, 94, a lot of things are allowed to fly. Ashera. Mother Creation. While in the active party, allies in battle will gain the same support effects as user and recover from ail from ailments. Wait, are you just ailment immunity?
Every time she buffs, maybe. Moderate HP recovery and removes ailments and debuffs from all allies. That's a strong skill, but again, 95, things are allowed to fly. This would be a end game sort of healing buff. High heal, high fire, yes. Drain dark, it'd be allowed. Bowl of Hygienia, I feel like that should not be the final one you get, but sure. Yeah, every time she gets a buff, she casts my Patra, probably. Then Hellel. Shining. Yeah, she seems actually pretty balanced. I'd see it as like an endgame sort of demon that you can get. Honestly, it's alright for me. Hello, Glorious Invocation. While in the active party, all allies' almighty attacks may become critical hits. Only almighty attacks are brought up, so specialized a bit, but again, high level demons, a lot of things are allowed to go. Severe almighty attack to all foes. Debilitate Ice Age, Fry Google. And then they only get high almighty pleroma as the next skill. Honestly, it's alright. I feel like I need to see what the ratios are, but this seems okay for like an end game demon Hellel so that you can unlock. And the final one that was added, Alternative Satan. While in the active party, allies attacks with positive skill effects may become, or skill potency may become critical hits, and increase the damage when striking a foe's weakness of Metatron. Yeah. And Tixion, Hailstorm of God, AoE, Ice Age probably, with High Ice and High Almighty. And you learn nothing else. This guy was Hailstorm of God. Oh, that's right, you said the of God ones are boss skills. But this one seems fine, as a level 99 thing, and it is Satan themselves, yeah. How's it going, Meryl Goner? Welcome. But yes, that are the demons added in the mod. And now let me tell you why some of this is okay for the moment. What do you think it would cost for me to summon one of the demons we said that was busted? Like, let's say Aniel. So is Arta in the game? Oh, wait, yeah, that's right. Arta is in the game right here. Oh, wait, that's right. They have Ruin and Grace. It's this. Defense defense minimum for three turns and HP recovery for all eyes and luster candy. This is it. That is completely different. <laughs> <laughs> and completely busted. Yes, it is. But at the very least, it's a special fusion only, as you saw. And it requires Shiva and Parvati. For lore reasons, of course. I'm doing all right today, Marl Goner. For a final thing, I feel like this is up there, but all right. How far in are you? We're. I last left off just before I ascended the steps to the throne to do the law ending. And so far, I've just been going through all the demons that were added in by this mod as of today. Remember that dude that uses it when he guards? Yes, that is a bit busted. On my... Ardha, that's um, that's amazing and worth it for like the tr the trouble it will take to get there because you have to beat Shiva and other stuff to get this. But the other one getting it on guard is busted. Oh, also, this one was not originally shown, I believe. Very Oh no, I think I did show. I showed the special ones first, and then I showed the other ones. Like uh, there's a Maji Wangwu and a Marisi. Sati. Yeah, we're good on that. All right. Then you eradicate just a little bit more, then, you're, then I would say you're okay, because I'm just about to wrap up this and then go on to the story. The reason I said all of this is fine is because, let's say you want to make Yggdrasil. There is only one fusion combination to make them. All these new demons currently have only one fusion mob. Like, thing to w way to make them. Nothing else. And even then, 
If you're like, those are busted skills, let's pass them around. It's not possible to fuse away the, these new demons. They've not been slotted into the formula. There is no way to pass them around unless they were already in the game. And also, you might think, oh, so that means they're missing a lot of things, such as essences, right? No. Some of them have essences. But not all of them, I feel. At the very least, I've leveled every single one of these one by one on a new moon to 150, and none of them gave me an essence. Arta gave me an essence on fusion, but that was it. So I generally do not know what's the requirement to get their essences, or if it's just very rare. Maybe not all of them have it. But at the very least, I've only ever gotten one from the mod demons, but they are there. Essences are, yeah, they're probably adding them later. So you can't have Endure Avatar Pleroma and High Pleroma on a single Kara. You cannot get the um, uh, Avatar and stuff on another demon aside the one. So like my current demons, I have Arta. I have not fused in the other stuff, but like Cthulhu, the one that I run, Survivor, Pleroma, High Pleroma, Repel, Null, and Enduring Soul. Even the Krishna has two survivors and an enduring soul. But the avatar skills, I have not found an essence that lets me transfer it, so I generally do not know if you can. But these are the demons I have. Return. Majamat, don't worry, baby guy. But I'm about to go beat the game and just break it in half. So. This is what I was actually using before the stream started. I was doing that, and I think I was using Cthulhu, but I could change that to, say, Hachiman, or if I even wanted, like, technically Beelzebub, because there's no Herald, uh, Megami, or Feme, or Lady Demon, so that's just that right there. And now I'll put Guan Yu up here. So back to the throne. <laughs> 